Oh my gosh. That's incredible. There she is. Wow. So we're gonna get this unloaded and we'll have a good look around her. That's incredible, isn't it? That is amazing. Jeez Louise. Back where she belongs. Hello everybody and welcome to the British Motor Museum and my YouTube channel. Um, it's an incredibly special day because you can see behind me the RDX 60 is finally out for everybody to enjoy and it's going to be going in there in the British Motor Museum's workshop to be looked at by their specialists and fixed up so she is back to the condition she should be in. Now remember to subscribe for more of this and like the video and drop a comment on this momentous occasion. I can't thank everybody enough for just how much support and just how incredible this journey's been. Thank you to the British Motor Museum for inviting me to come and look at this incredible car um, and make an 11 year old's weird dreams come true. And um, thank you to all you guys for supporting us through this and everybody that's been involved in this car's journey from long before my little rumpus, my little paddy about it. So without further delay, we're gonna have a good look at this car because that's what you're here to see. So the RDX 60 is, um, a car that MG Rover were looking at developing in the early 2000s. Now I've made a full-on documentary about this car, so if you want to watch that, there's a more in-depth um, video, and I'll link that below. However, this car is the prototype mock-up, so only one of the doors work, and it's got a KV6 in it from a Rover 75. It is based on a Rover 75 platform. This car is the car that was driven out by Peter Stevens in 2003 to show to all the press, and it's just absolutely brilliant. It's finally out here it was lost in the depths of Longbridge um, MG Motor UK had had it for a while and they didn't really know what they were going to do with it until of course things went a bit bananas now there's been a few people involved throughout the time the British Motor Museum being one of them have been the most consistent throughout trying to secure these cars but I sort of did a video in January of 2023 um, highlighting where the hell have they gone and then I did another video and um, where I basically said I think I've found them and then somebody sent me a picture and then it all snowballed from there I went out to Longbridge um, one winter's one autumn night and caused a bit of a rumpus outside of a fence and then it got picked up by the BBC and everything so this is just a really really incredible moment and to follow it from its journey from there to here is just incredible so I'm gonna give you a tour around this incredible one-off beast and we'll go from there. So here we are, this is a first. So I'm the first person to look around this car and video it on YouTube, so that is incredible. Now, this car is, as I mentioned, based on a Rover 75. It's got a KV6 engine, and it looks like it's got the 190 front brakes, which is cool. Now you can see the X on there. These wheels, I think, are bespoke to this car, so these, this is the only Rover ever fitted with these wheels. Underneath, Rover 75, KV6 engine. Is the bonnet going to lift up because we had a bit of trouble with that? I'll leave that for now, but we'll try to get it up. Um, I'll drop a little clip there of us trying to get it up. Um, these lights are bespoke to the car as well. Everything is a complete one-off. So the British Motor Museum have really got, um, you know, they haven't got the work cut out for them because they know what they're doing, but they're the guys that are to, um, definitely going to be able to sort this out. Now, you notice you had that one wheel. It's now on 190 wheels on some of these corners. So I think these wheels have probably been, they probably only had two of these made, the X wheels, as we'll call them. It's all these little details that you don't get to see. It's very 75-ish under there. You can see where they've sort of changed a few bits. Same sort of setup on the rear. Is there over 75? It's just incredibly cool. This is sort of an initial look around at what this car is. This tire's definitely seen better days. This is probably from about the time it was made. It's of course it's been in storage a few years and then it's been outside for a bit these doors don't work they literally don't work at all this door sort of does but i'm not gonna we're not gonna do anything with that 190 wheels and all that jazz back rocks as well that looks to be from an mgtf it does it's from an mgtf and then this boot as well is not working so this is a complete this is before prototyping stages now she suffered a bit of damage unfortunately there so that's very sad. This is a bit, this is a piece of glass. 
again glass tailgate as you'd expect another bit of glass there then you've got these very nice windows i think this is a really really cool design i really do a lot of people say it looks like a vectra sort of does facelift vectra front signum sort of rear end but this predates all of that stuff so we're gonna have a good look at the inside of the car now and then we'll have a look at a lot of other stuff so here we are we're gonna have a look inside the car confident door pull these are also bespoke to the car of course you can see these are mock that isn't though well these are oh no that is yeah that doesn't sound too great nothing there we've got our rover 75 key again this is based on the 75 platform this switch gear not 100 percent what that what that's from but i'm going to definitely research into that we've got the steering wheel which a lot of people have said is very vectra-esque we've got the standard gear knob from a rover 75 or mgzt with a new gator we've got a sadly very broken green wonderful green um leather armrest and the weirdest thing is these um, rear seats with these um, glued on adhesed headrests. That is really, really, really cool. And you've got all this interior is green, themed the same as the car. That's from a 75, if you know your 75s. And I'm actually gonna sit in it. So I'm gonna get a good sit. She ain't. The brakes are nice nice and firm it is all very 75 you can even see down there this is all 75 you've got your bonnet release the boot switch is not there because the boot obviously doesn't open and then you've got your, your um, dials now these are completely this way and they don't have a uh, cover over them so I can touch them this is just incredible to look at let's just open this please don't break okay uh it's a phone card let's just stick that back in there appropriately green we've even got some two p's in here where are these two p's from they're from 1971 what the bloody heck <laughs> there's some really interesting stuff in here 1988 this is probably the most weird in-depth video you're ever going to see of this this of course we've got heated seats supposedly heated front and rear windscreen obviously you've got your elements that'll run through the back and then this will just be a big blower She's very, the dash is very, very short, very short compared to how I would expect it to be. These are, of course, the trims. They would go on here, and I assume the British Motor Museum will definitely be putting them back on. Indicator, 75, the smoked style indicators. You've got some other things. This will obviously be from here, and these doors actually don't work. <laughs> so, good luck getting out. Oh, that was a mock switch. Let's put that back. Yeah, so these are all mock. You can see there where that's um, that's been glued on. What an absolutely fantastic moment to see this. I'm going to shut the door. Now, most people would advise against this. I'm in it. I'm in the I'm in the RDX 60. Let's go, boys. We did it. We got it here. You all did this, not me. We did this together. Everybody throughout all of this from before me to now we all did this together and it is absolutely amazing it's come so far and i cannot believe it's actually here it's here where it's you know where it's going to be restored where it's going to be looked after where it's going to be displayed our motoring heritage in the best place for the motoring heritage in gaydon in the british motor museum and it is just incredible i'd love to stick a battery on it and see exactly what the heck it's going to do but <laughs> i obviously can't do that i'm going to i'd love to see what these guys do with it and i definitely will be keeping um an eye on this because it is incredible it stinks in here because it's the par sod has been left outside these seats i don't know what they're from these look completely bespoke this is a plastic headlining and uh let's look up here Eesh. yes of course these are all stuck on same as the other one it's got a weird sort of uh this isn't a textured effect this is sort of where it's gone a bit funny that is insane this is all you know proper concepty stuff oh these work though oh. this is fake <laughs> dab it's gonna have dab radio that's cool that's interesting something else in here i don't know what that is 
What else have we got? Anything in here? Nope. We would have had... Um, is there anything in the back? We can't actually get in the back, but I'll give you a good look around. Oh, we've got this. A lot of people... Are you going to open? No, we're not going to open. We've got the little door bins at the back. More than you get on a 75. The 75 doesn't have any door bins on the back. It's very long though, it seems. For a golf rival, it's quite long. It's quite big and the front doesn't look really in proportion to the rear. But, I mean, it's incredible. I should reset our mileage. Oh no, that's all fake. This is all almost sort of 3D printed, injection molded stuff. I don't know plastic manufacturing, but you guys know that sort of stuff. A little IPK there. It really is something else. I mean, come on. This is just incredible. I don't know why there's a hazard light switch there and almost a hazard light switch here. Maybe that's to do something. There would have been some knobs here. Luckily there's only one in the car at the moment. Um, you've got your little plastic pad, 75 had this. Take that out, you know, you'd get your crumbs off it. Now this um, dashboard would definitely be marked by my partner's um, foundation hands. <laughs> it's very appropriately green though. I love this. I would buy one of these. I think this is fantastic She's not the uh, best built of the bunch. These are all fake switches as you would know This is uh, yeah But she's uh, she is as she is. I was hoping for a nod to the SD1 there with a nice little um, Watch me who's it a uh, another glove box this key 75 key Go in there. I mean is she got a steering wheel lock? No, she's just a, just an out and out Rover, just an out and out MG Rover, but that's just it. And I thought it would be incredibly appropriate to wear this. Um, it's a bit of a tribute really to the workers that worked so hard at Longbridge to create these incredible cars and that lost bit of British motoring heritage. I just think this is, this is a real mon monumentous occasion, a momentous occasion. We'll use every single word I can muster or make up this is something else. I don't think I've ever been in a car as rare as this, as exclusive as this. Now, this was going to be their mass market family car. This was going to be their golf competitor. Um, do I think it would have done well? Probably not because of the circumstances at the time, which we'll cover in another video. Oh, there's a knob there. <clears throat> a wooden knob for our climate. No, no, it's not wooden. It's plastic. So that obviously would have gone here, probably. Just stick that there. I'm finding loads of interesting things in this car. Anything interesting in here? Just some seals. Um, I wish I had smell -a vision You would smell what I smell, and it's not very nice. But this car will be back to her former glory soon, thanks to the British Motor Museum. I mean, yeah, that really covers it for the interior. And we'll just do a few more outside shots. But there's another panel of green for our interior to match our exterior. Really, really incredible. I hope I can get out. Oh, I can get out. Thank God for that. So now we'll move on to the outside and we'll have a look underneath. Yes, I am going to crawl on my hands and knees and have a look at this because why not? So, underneath, Rover 75 through and through. See on there. Do you need... Oh, no, it might need a bush replacing on that lower control, on the control arm there. It is a 75 through and through this. Now, I thought there was, a, there was supposed to be a change to the rear suspension on this. Can I have a look at that? Oh, petrol cap. Cool. Let's have a look under here. Now you've got your MG F slash TF exhaust. Yes, I think that is different to the 75. You might know more than me, you probably do. Let me know. I think that's completely different. But that is monstrous and incredible. What a fantastic car. Getting it in here was, was cool as out as well. To say that you've pushed this is something else. It really is a right old beast, this. And I absolutely love it. And the British Motor Museum are gonna take incredible care of it and look after it and give it what it deserves. A damn good restoration so we can all see it in its glory. The what if and the what could have been of MG Rover. So everybody, Thank you for watching. Keep watching, remember to subscribe for more of this and we will see you in the next video. Incredible, and sat with the RDX 60.
happy happy as could be and my 75's over there goodbye everybody